Yes, so Molly Ringwald recently was on a panel for Variety where she said that 80s teen movies were too white and if they were remade today, they need more diversity. And you might know her from Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles, The Breakfast Club, all of that. Everything, every John Hughes movie that gave you any level yes. of comfort when you were a child is being come, they're coming <laughs> for it, my friends. They're not going to allow you to have those things. Let's uh, look at her comments. There we go. Those movies, the movies that, you know, are, I'm so well known for, they were very much of a time, you know, and, and if you were to remake that now, I think it would have to be much more diverse and it would have to be, um, you know, it, you couldn't make a movie that white. <laughs> um, really, really very white. <laughs> and, and they don't really represent, um, you know, what it is to be a teenager in a school in America today. I don't you know what she just said, right? She said, detentions are a majority of minorities. That's mm. what she's saying. If you go into detention and it's all white people, it's not accurate. So really, she's the racist. I think. So true. So, you know. Yes, but, queen. But, yeah, like, and then everyone clapped. Well, she, she did at least two pauses in there where she was waiting for clap <laughs> for Clapter in the middle. Where yeah. She's like, it's really very white. <laughs> yeah, like it was so bad. <laughs> it's it's the meme of uh, of everybody holding up uh, yeah. the, the lady, and it's just like white women when they insult their own race on the internet. Uh, and and the thing is, is I, I make the same point for like when when we talked about the um, the covers of songs and like whether uh, Dolly Parton would be upset with the changes made to a cult, you know, to a a cover of her song like yeah. Beyonce did to the artist. They will look at this very differently than the people who watched those movies, right? So uh, her or anyone involved in those pictures, now that they've made their money, they've accomplished what they wanted to with that project and they've moved on, they can say, oh yeah, change it. It'll be great. The, 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 the people from Friends said the same thing. I don't remember when oh, yeah. David Schwimmer was like, oh yeah, they can yeah. remake Friends. It's got to make it more diverse, right? right? Nothing would be left alone because they're filled with self-hatred that has been pushed on them by their own industry. Well, I mean, the first response I see says they didn't represent what it was to be a teenager in school when they came out in the 80s. Yeah. Because they're movies. And it's right? not supposed to. And I don't know if a show like Friends or a show like Seinfeld accurately represents what it is to be a single adult in New York. You know why? In the 90s. Because nobody actually <laughs> wants to watch something about the real world. Yeah. They want to watch stylized stories that tell interesting tales of interesting people that doesn't really have any, like the last thing I want to do, like, like when I go to watch a movie, right? Like if I go watch a Batman movie, I don't want to hear Batman on the phone talking about like how he pays his bills or when he's got doctor's appointments or, hey, Alfred, did oh. you fill up the, did you fill the gas tank on the rolls? I don't want to hear that. I want to hear fantastical stories that keep me riveted uh, in watching it. Boring is the real world. Storytelling is not supposed to be that. I just saw a horrible response saying, The Breakfast Club would actually be the perfect reboot with a diverse cast if done well. Imagine the tension and learning between a hijabi girl, a black American, a Hispanic immigrant, a white American, a non-binary LGBTQIA+, etc. That would be so cool to see. But now they're talking about, like, they're talking about a, a different point to the movie, though. Yes. Right? It's no longer like, about Wait, so the, what was the point of The Breakfast Club? The Breakfast Club I thought there was, wasn't a point. <clears throat> no, the Breakfast Point the Breakfast Club was to show was to bring together like all the kids that were like supposedly so different and they were mm -hmm. like all basically the same. Okay, I it, it was more focused on like class differences, mm -hmm. right? Than race, gender, sexuality yeah. because Molly Ringwald's character is the rich girl. Mm -hmm. right? But they all, but they also they had the jock and they had the introvert girl. And those, and so they like they had just all the different yeah. like personalities kind of represented. And a guy could wear a trench coat back then and not be seen <laughs> as a potential yeah. school shooter. Here's the thing Can't though. Do that now. The, there's a difference between racial demographics and archetypes. So archetypes can appeal to everyone. It doesn't matter your race. You can still be a jock. You can still be a geek. You can still be a goth. You can be all of these things. The rich girl in class can be of any, you know, can be any 
any race. Yeah, well, it the, does not matter, it, the, which is why it should speak to everyone. If they make it about like the 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 obvious physical, like you can see differences, like the race and stuff like that, they're not talking about like differences of people because all those people are gonna all the characters are gonna have the same opinions. Yes, you know, so it's yeah. ne- they're 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 all gonna be like, well, you know. I had these these different life experiences, but we all have the same opinion, and and we all think the same thing. And it's like, well, that's not really what the the point is. You're not you're not coming together and and sharing different experiences. You're just talking about like you all agree on this, and this is all that you know. It's like it's there's a sameness yeah. that's there. Yeah, because like if if the idea was to make the point that they all look different and hold perhaps stereotypical views of the other group, they're not going to allow any of them but the white characters to do that to have bad views of other people. Yeah. Well, wouldn't they make the white character stereotypically, uh, like? Yeah, but there has to be more. There has to be more conflict. minded than, Yes, but there has to be more than one conflict in the movie, and all the other characters wouldn't be allowed to have those flaws. I Not mean, in any real sense. They couldn't make a a Breakfast Club reboot of Gen Z teenagers now, primarily they because they wouldn't get detention anyways. Well, true, they don't get disciplined anymore. But also, Gen Z teenagers don't even have cultural differences anymore because subcultures have been totally flattened out. Yep. Mm-hmm. In favor of, I guess, what your for you page on TikTok looks like. Yep. It's just the person with colored hair and the person who doesn't have colored co- hair. Like, they they don't have subcultures of music of because dress every, because you're not allowed to anything. gatekeep anything anymore you have to allow now everybody's invited to everything and bullying and it, doesn't exist anymore yeah. because of the anti-bullying campaigns of the 2000s and 2010s so i mean i maybe i'm wrong let me know if, if any of you guys have like teenage kids but my perception right now is that bullying doesn't even exist in in modern day high schools and there's a certain level of virtue signaling that comes from something like this that is just so unbelievably modern hollywood to me where like i wonder what emilio estevez has to say about this right Mm -hmm. because he was his name is emilio estevez was he not diverse Back then, does he not count as diverse? Well, if you're white passing, it doesn't count. Ah, okay. So, so it's about how how they look, <laughs> not about actual diversity. I get it. Mm-hmm. Also, the soundtrack would likely suck this time around. Oh yeah, it would be like Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish. Uh, <laughs> just not not. You can't do it again. There is also an unbelievable lack of gratitude to this type of perspective, right? Like her, I, I believe personally, her job should be, I was very grateful for the opportunity in the movies that we made at that time had a long lasting impact on American culture. And that's all you have to say. Mm-hmm. I don't think you need to then go in Monday morning quarterback what it would be like to make these movies now. Or you say, look, there are modern day stories that could be adjacent to this that should be told that will not carry the baggage of the name of this film, which will already pe- lead people into it with a negative impression because they're going to want it to give them the same emotional resonance that the original film had. And when it doesn't, when it changes its themes, like you said, it's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouth. I don't think that's actually a super complicated take, but that's a lot harder to say than just say, yes, change it because of diversity. Mm-hmm. I think this is just a stereotypical story of a Hollywood has been who, you know, isn't getting as much work as she used to and now feels at liberty to give all of these woke opinions when she's already made her money off of the entertainment people actually adore. The modern version would be like the the, the head of the, you know, the the, deten- the person in head of detention would just have an OnlyFans and then oh. get fired. Yeah, they would have to have an OnlyFans teacher, of course. Oh, God. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.